So Musky McApartheid has been under constant fire from Twitter users and the media for the last year, and for good reason. The man who cried censorship and shouted from the rooftops that he'd make Twitter a bastion of free speech was of course all for the grift. We all knew from the second that he bought Twitter that he didn't have a plan, nor did he even have a plan on making it a bastion of free speech. If he actually did, then he wouldn't be banning leftists and trans people for calling cisgender people cisgender, a completely scientific term that accurately describes those who identify with the gender that they were assigned at birth. He would understand that even if he wanted a free speech platform, then you wouldn't be limiting people's access to reading tweets in order to drive revenue for your shitty Twitter Blue premium service that nobody wants to spend money on anyway. And if you are going to renege on that whole free speech premise and issuing limitations, then you would equally go after the hate speech slung at gays and trans people, at people of color, and you would crack down on the use of things like the N-word and not just those calling white people, for lack of a better term because I don't want to get this video taken down, <coughs> saltines. Now, we all know why Salty McSpace Nuts is doing this. It's pretty blatantly obvious that he cares little for free speech and more for protecting his right-wing buddies. You know, the ones that deny science, like vaccines, and who are driven more by vision and innovation rather than the facts and safety regulations. Ask Stockton Rush how that worked out. Oh wait, you can't, because he's, you know gone to, the, to Davy Jones' locker two and a half miles underneath the surface of the Atlantic Ocean next to an 111-year-old shipwreck because his innovation literally imploded like a fucking beer can. But more to the point, he is trying to make Twitter the bastion of reactionary cesspit for homophobes, transphobia, and blatant racism. And white supremacy. Which shouldn't come as a surprise, given that he is a white Afrikaner whose dad was the owner of an emerald mine and whose family benefited, whether they want to admit it or not, from apartheid, and who essentially employs slave labor himself in order for his company to mine lithium for his shitty electric cars. Now, Twitter's problems began when Musk announced his intention to purchase the company back in April 2022, and when the deal was formally approved in October the same year, the writing was already on the wall of how broken the site was about to become after Musk laid off 75% of the Twitter workforce and announced the creation of a subscription-based service, Twitter Blue, which includes the blue verified check mark that informs people of who is real and who's not, such as a media personality or celebrity like George Takai, Stephen King, etc., and who was a bot, a troll, or a parody fan account. This, of course, is now what the gold check mark is supposedly supposed to, sig to signify. The site had numerous complaints, bugs, and other issues that have plagued it, but nothing as compared to the controversy surrounding the chief twit himself. In June 2023, Musk announced that cis and cisgender were slurs, and that anyone caught using them would be suspended or banned from the site. This, of course, stewed controversy online, and the whole debacle became viral news and an overnight meme. While some users have had their accounts suspended in the wake of this, it is hard to tell who has actually been banned from the site due to the use of the scientific term, or if they are being banned for some other reason. Either way, it prevent, presents an interesting question. If he is so concerned about the poor cis people being discriminated against, what about the trans people who are being called all kinds of vile things, such as a groomer and a pedophile, tannies with a hard R, tunes with a hard R, or how about the use of the N-word with a hard R? Is there anything that's being done to curb those words, Elon? No? Thought so. Perhaps this has to do with his insecurities and toxic masculinity. Maybe it has to do with the fact that his ex-girlfriend left him for a liberal trans whistleblower. Maybe it has to do with that his older daughter is, is trans and wants absolutely nothing to do with his salty, racist, homo-transphobic ass. 
But it, the final nail in the coffin for a lot of people was the announcement that Twitter would be temporarily restricting users to a certain amount of tweets that they can read and access a day, largely an attempt to curb the criticism that he is getting, but also to censor online leftists, gays, and trans people, as this did come right at the end of Pride Month. And anyone who dares question the great elongated muskrat. But here's a, what, where it gets interesting. Would he be able to pull this off, or would this largely end up becoming a failed idea in the trash heap of shitty ideas and takes that he has had over the last year? Because effectively what this would do, if implemented, would fail and backfire in the way that many of us have been saying would happen after his takeover last year. It would break Twitter. It would render it useless. And the whole point of social media is to have unfiltered and unlimited access to posts, promotional ads, and news and media information. However, what this could do is set the precedent for other social media companies like Meta, who owns Facebook and Instagram, to start charging a subscription for their services as well. Now, there have been rumors for like the last 10 years or so so that have circulated over and over again that this is what Mark Zuckerberg is going to do, but nothing has ever really come from it. But here's the thing. Musk could essentially be the one to do it. And if he finds an effective way to do it, then other companies are going to start doing it too. Hell, the whole BS going on with Reddit, they could easily turn around and say, okay, we'll give in to your demands. You can have your third party, you know, access and all that. But you have to pay us to, you have to subscribe to Reddit Premium and to, to access it, you have to pay X amount of money per month, X amount of money per year, whatever, for that special access. They could do it. And there wouldn't be a goddamn thing that any of us could do about it. Sure, you could boycott and say, Oh, this isn't right. I'm going to protest. Rabble, rabble, rabble. But nothing is going to change. Because that's the nature of capital. That's the nature of privately owned corporations. They have to make profit. And if they have to charge a subscription for access to their services, they'll do it. Now, the possibility of Musk actually pulling this off is very minimal, as he has shown time and time again that he's just absolutely incapable and in, at the very least incompetent of putting together projects like these, realizing just how much work and labor that actually needs to go into it, overworking his already short and underpaid staff, leading many of them to, be quit, uh, to quit or be fired, and then eventually him just going, nah, fuck it. And I think that that is exactly, well, maybe not exactly, but that is likely what's going to happen here. Now, that's not to say that he isn't going to try and explore the idea and try to implement it, which is why he said that this move was temporary, which is a term, by the way, that companies use all the time. They say, oh, this is just going to be a temporary measure. That literally means that they are exploring the possibility of making something permanent seeing if it's going to be feasible, attainable, you know, just like they're treading the waters to see how efficient that's going to be. They don't care about your opinion. Your opinion doesn't matter. Because at the end of the day, if it ends up driving even an inch of profit for them, they're going to do it. Now, I already made mention of this in my Reddit API video, so I'm not really going to spend a whole lot of time regurgitating the same crap that I just put out, um, because I feel that that would be repetitive. But I've seen a lot of people, including myself, who have been exploring the possibility of other social media outlets in the aftermath of this announcement. And I'd just like to reiterate that people like Elon Musk don't care if they tank the site, which is, it does seem like he is legitimately trying to do. Because to him, losing a couple tens of billions of dollars is a small loss compared to the hundreds of billions that he currently already has. The only people that it truly hurts 
are the lower tier employees, the wage workers, the interns, and the people that have found a community of like-minded people to call home. And of course, the friends that they've made along the way. For some of us, this was even a place where we've promoted our YouTube videos. God knows I have. It's where we've promoted our social media links, our Patreons, and for some, their spicy content. But none of that matters as the internet continues to move away as a, from a public source of information to a privatized commodity to be bought and sold just like anything else, and where access to it could soon become restricted to a select few willing to pay for it. And while sites like Mastodon, Blue Sky, and Tribal promise that they will be different, it is very obvious, especially from the fact that Blue Sky requires an invite code from another user who is lucky to be privileged with, with being granted exclusive access to the site, or Mastodon, which requires multi-tiers of verification to even get access, that they are all going to be different. They all promise that they're going to be different. But they are just they are just mutually exclusive, not through a subscription service, but in who they deem worthy of being on that site. Which, at first, sounds like a good idea. But it is one that most of us on the left, for instance, likely will not have the luxury of having because of our views. Don't get it twisted. The mutual exclusivity of this whole thing is based around politics. You know, of course you don't want the extremist right-wing people. We, we, we'll keep you all safe from that. But we also kind of don't want all those tankies over here, you know, crushing our, our good vibes and stuff like that. It, it is all purely political. Because it is run by a bunch of fucking liberals. But even if this changes, or even if it doesn't, it is unlikely to turn a profit for years, and eventually, it too will end up becoming just like all the others, and could potentially become even more exclusive with paid subscription services, which offer certain perks or incentives to its users, something that, unfortunately, not all of us will have the means to access. I leave you with the words of George Carlin, who said, It's a big club, and you ain't in it. I'm Red Pagan Nicole, and this has been Red Pagan Corner. Until next time. <laughs>